Well, today's event was, it's called Holocaust and Genocide. And the purpose of that was, how do we extinguish the sparks of hatred that flare up every now and then when there is a whiff of oxygen and causing havoc, causing destruction, uh, changing lives. And that was the idea of this program, Holocaust and Genocides. Uh, we've been doing this for seven years, and I'm proud to say I'm the first Muslim in the world to commemorate Holocaust uh, and consistently doing it for seven years. It is, I want to tell my Jewish friends that I am with you in your difficult times. It is a very apprehensive event, and I'm also against anti-Semitism. And I know how you feel, and this Holocaust event was a needed event, and um, we wanted to educate people from different faiths, different traditions, different nationalities, and that was the purpose of our thing. It was education, so we can learn the uh, inhumanity within us, each one of us. We look ourselves as victims sometimes, but we fail to see the perpetrator in us. And our goal is to learn about ourselves and find out ways to change the world and learn to say never again, never ever again. And how can we do that? And it is through education, learning small basics, when there is hatred, when there is a war between two people. And if we ever feel justified that one deserved to be killed or deserved to be punished, there is something wrong with that thinking. And that thinking, when it multiplies and grows, it leads to genocides and massacres. So we need to stop at that moment as a part of the education. We need to learn that, hey, this is wrong for me to think that way. What can I do? And it is actually a relief. Finding the truth is, brings a lot of relief when you connect with other people, when you don't have any hatred in you, when you don't have any prejudice against other people. That is the real bottom line happiness that you get. And I hope to take this education to every place we can. And um, I want to thank people attending. I want to thank for this opportunity to share some of my thoughts. And uh, it is a fulfillment to me as a child. Growing up as a child, it was always there in my mind, how do I connect with people? And this is one of the ways. And this is a lifelong fulfillment for me to do this event. Thank you very much. For people that came to the event, and that was our consistent theme throughout the speakers and in the points we made. Uh, number one is that other people's suffering is as legitimate as my own suffering. And it is easy to see ourselves as victims without seeing the perpetrator in us. When we start seeing that, we'll bring a change in ourselves to bring a change for others. When we strip the politics out of any conflict, we can see hope, we can see a possibility of a positive change. Then we can value other people's suffering without diminishing, decimating our own. And this idea that if I acknowledge other people's suffering, somehow my suffering is reduced is wrong. We can acknowledge everybody's suffering. We feel more human, more connected with ourselves. I hope this is what people walked away with. It. And at the end, it is a sense of individual responsibility. I hope people felt that I got to do something. The least of which is to speak up. When there is something wrong, when some evil is done, if you don't have the power to change, if you're afraid of the situation, speak up in forums, in the newspaper, editorials, wherever you get a chance, stay behind the scene and still speak up. Facebook, social media, you can use all them. I had like a Reverend Burke had said once long time ago, evil exists in the world not necessarily because of evil people, it's because of good people like you and I who don't do anything to stop the evil. So I hope people walk away with that, and I wanted everyone to be speak up when they see something wrong. That's it. This event was over the top. It was very important to be a part of this, and I'm glad that the Mendocino Institute could collaborate with the Institute for Pluralism for this event. It raises our awareness to the point that most people are just not aware of what's going on today and what's going on around the world and what's going on in our own backyard with these uh, issues of racism and genocide and the Holocaust. All of these issues are still here with us today 
and we need to pay attention to every little nuance that indicates this. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, I thought the gathering of uh, people from various denominations, various cultures, various religions, various backgrounds, various nationalities uh, coming together to discuss a topic, a very sensitive topic, but a topic that needs to be discussed, needs to be addressed, uh, I think is absolutely stunning, is absolutely uh, exhilarating for me. Uh, the only uh, thing that I would request is uh, I would have liked people to be so crowded in there that you know we would have had lines out the door uh, because this topic is something that is so grave and so important that it needs to reach out to everyone. All of us here that have attended, we ensure and we gear up that around us we have light, the light of passion and knowledge and willingness to make sure that events of any magnitude of travesty or injustice do not occur. And then everyone watching to ensure that from this day on, they teach their children, they teach their relatives, and they teach themselves that whenever they see an injustice, they speak up and they vociferously and adamantly work towards a world in which our children will grow up to be free of fanaticism and injustice and intolerance. Uh, events like this, uh, you know, uh, makes it real for us. You know, it, it, it kind of reminds us of um, uh, when, when, we, when we get so busy with our daily lives that, that we forget uh, the atrocities uh, that are being committed and that have been committed in the past and that are being committed uh, on a daily basis uh, around us uh, in some part of the world. This is one of his brilliant achievements that he has done today and we compliment him with our sincere and best wishes and sincere uh, uh, heart and best wishes and I'm sure that uh, he will continue doing this marvelous service for the humanity at large and we wish him the best. When I was young growing up, you know, I, I really didn't know anything about genocide. I, you know, I heard about Germany and and uh, what happened to the Jews, but when, you know, when you're a kid, you, you hardly think about anything like that. I mean, you know, when, when we played Cowboys and Indians, we always wanted to be the Cowboys because, you know, on TV, you see them and they're, they're uh, you know, they're always the good guy, you know, with the white hat and the, the horse and the gun and killing everybody and killing Indians. But as you get older, and you start to realize, you know, you're you're Native American, and uh, then you hear things like about the AIM movement, American Indian movement, and then you start studying about what really happened to your people, and uh, it it touches your heart. I mean, it touched mine when I was young, and I was reading about, you know, uh, the way uh, tribes were taken over systematically. I mean, it was almost it was almost like a the same pattern, you know, the 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 Europeans, the colonists would come in and, and uh, they'd make friends with one side of the tribe and usually the chief and his family. And after a while, the rest of the tribe would get angry and then uh, they'd introduce alcohol and and other things and then they'd be given one side gifts. And I mean, it was it was all just a, like a, a plot to, to uh, weaken the tribe from within before they would actually slam the hammer down on them. And it happened clear across the United States. I would like people to consider that genocide does happen, and and it's uh, it's really hurtful, and it's really upsetting to think that there are people out there who can just hate other people and kill other people just because they're a different religion or they're. Uh, sexuality is not the same or uh, the color of their skin is not the same or because they own some some land that they want to take over it's just uh, it's just horrible and uh, I hope that people will learn from what they're doing we're doing here today that uh, this type of thing genocide will never happen again that's what I, what I pray for. Well, being a full blood American Indian, and I'm a citizen of the Choctaw Nation from Oklahoma, and a retired educator in the ISD, and a very active cultural 
speaker, educator, I'm always interested in to see what is out there in reference to Holocaust and genocide, especially in reference to American Indians, and knowing that it has in, uh, involved other nationalities. So it's always very interesting, but I want to be there to support the other ethnics that have experienced this. So it was very, very interesting. And as we all know, we need to learn of each other and support each other. And uh, I enjoyed the presentation. I think more awareness needs to be done, more uh, education as far as the similarities in the differences of diversity that is represented, not only in the United States, but at the global. We all have very similar problems. We could have same similar situation if we work together that might come in with a great results. But unfortunately, we all like to be isolated. We like to be separated and do things our own way. I was really impressed with the presentation. I felt like every um, lecture and presentation was, was heartfelt and emotional and informative. Actually, I come away with more information that I knew beforehand um, involving different cultures, different um, um, other types of people that are actually the same as we are but they may live in a different part of the country or part of the world. And I, I think that it opened my eyes and my heart a little bit more in, in the words of acceptance and appreciation and respect. I'm grateful that I attended today's event. Um, I thought it was pretty informative. It was uh, very interesting to hear the different points of view from um, the different ethnic groups. Um, the numbers that were shown, um, the respect that was shown, it, it was pretty informative. If they want to know someone else's culture, to research it, and if they have the chance to sit down and actually learn from an individual of that culture, that would be the best way. Um, for us as American Indians, we have a long history here in this country that we originally habitated. Um, but there's a lot of research that in schools you don't learn, that you would have to go out individually on your own independently and do these things to research it online, books through the library. If you can communicate with someone, another human, that you don't understand, it helps you to get along better. Uh, that's one of the main things I think racism um, thrives off of, is misunderstanding. You, you look at someone and just because they're different from you, you judge them um, from what you were taught or um, <clears throat> were told to uh, to judge people on and we all you know if you cut me I'm gonna bleed red just like you I hurt when I lose somebody um, we're all really just the same um, we just may look different on the outside and all you have to do is understand sit down with somebody talk with them you know be friendships could be born there there's a mixed bag as far as being American Indian there's representation of what, of what the real story is. There's other parts where you scratch the surface. There's other parts where you're teaching at a level that hits your adults or if you're trying to make sure that psychologically you're trying to embed an impression for them to walk away knowing that what, what they spoke about really hits the heart. And so in that part, you really have to look at and, and read between the lines and see what's really being depicted. To be truthful, the way you should do it is educate yourself even before you come to the event. And so you should take your steps to open up a book, go and go and Google different events, look at different videos, learn for what it's worth at the moment, and also break down your stereotypes and your prejudice first before you even walk over here. When you're able to walk over here, that's when the psychological movement happens. You're able to understand and then you're wanting more because after all, you're up here because you're curious, but also curiosity, you have to go from one level to another. So after that happens, then after, then after you leave this particular event, what are you going to do after that? Are you going to leave alone? Are you going to make a better um, challenge to yourself to make a movement? Or are you able to, able to help others to make a better impact in society? Everybody has the same story. Everybody has the rape and the little children passing away. The government, the soldiers doing what they need to do to fit the, the psychology that was told to them in the first part from the governmental um, leadership. 
But the same part, you have to understand that you're not the only person affected, that this story continues through the world, no matter if it's present day or if it's 200 years ago. There, You have to understand this, the overtones is that there's greed, there's psychological parts, there's real estate that, that wants to be conquered. And the other part is that no matter what, when you throw in politics and religion into something, a lot of people will follow and destroy each other but you have but when everything clears up you have to pick up the pieces and find out after that that it's there's a there's a lot of landmarks and a lot of milestones that has been destroyed so mending all those bridges will take forever and i think that reconciliation through everybody through the masses after a while you'll be able to talk and everybody has the same story and you'll be able to grow and then after a while you'll be able to connect it's been a very informative and, and moving event. I think that um, uh, the speakers had uh, a good command of the subject matter and uh, the details of events that we may know about if we're students of history uh, intellectually, but we don't often spend time studying, and so it was good to hear. Um, I don't know if good's the right word. I think a particular interest is was what the Native Americans had to say about the experience of Native Americans uh, on this continent and in this country. It's such a complex subject. I don't feel like in such a short amount of time it can be really covered adequately. I think it's very hopeful that there are people that came in order to engage the subject matter, which is uh, a difficult subject, a difficult question to address in terms of how do we respond to injustices that we find in the world that we live in today. I think we tend not to do anything because we don't know what we can do. But also I noticed that there was a message, it wasn't spoken quite as loudly, but it was there, I definitely heard it, that in the event of our daily lives, things do happen where, and things are said where we have an opportunity to speak up about them. I think there's a more abstract problem that's behind the immediate attention-getting problem of genocide, and that has to do with understanding between peoples. The problem is that I think I know what you think, but I'm wrong. But because I think I know, I don't ask. And you think you know what I think, but you're wrong. And because you think you know, you don't ask. And so I and my group of people talk about you and your group of people, what motivates you, what you do, what you think, what you believe, but we don't really know because we're not talking to each other, that what we need to do is to be talking to each other. And this is a subject that has been close to my heart for my whole life for, uh, 45 years I've been an Esperantist, and that's all about intercultural, international communication. And we have in the Esperanto communi community an idea that we call la interna ideo, the internal idea. That it's not just a matter of the mechanics of talking to each other, but the internal idea that if we talk to each other, not our government representatives, not the heads of great corporations, but just common people, if we can talk freely to each other face to face and speak honestly with each other, that that is the key to finding a way for us to live in this world peacefully. And nothing less than that will accomplish it. That ultimately, that's the solution. We have to know each other. We have to speak to each other. My parents are Holocaust survivors, and uh, I grew up as first-generation American. And so when I saw the... Uh, Auschwitz and Buchenhau. I um, have been there, but all my family were killed in those two concentration camps. So I grew up in a family that knows about the pain, and uh, my mother, is, who is still alive, is 87, and I can tell you, I was telling them inside that uh, I spent the whole evening with her last night because she has nightmares and can't deal with what happened to her. So, uh, you know, I grew up without a family. There were no grandparents 
no aunts, uncles, cousins, uh, and I can't imagine what my parents went through. And then you hear about all the genocides in the world. And it's, it's a pain that a lot of people just suppress and they don't want to talk about it or they hide it. And we need to face it, deal with it, and uh, find a way to love each other. I think we learned about each other. We learned that pain is pain. Uh, it, you know, we all can relate, like of course I relate to the Holocaust, and in Rwanda, people from there relate to there. But one thing we all have in common is that there's hate and there's love. And we need to find out why people choose hate. Between hate and love, uh, people, to me, there should be no choice. Uh, but unfortunately, going on still today, there's genocide and there's Holocaust that go on. And we need, I think what we've taken, will take home with us today is that we all know that we have to share our knowledge, accept it, and then go on and try to work together. You know, I think it has to get to go to the children. You know, if I took children from all over the world, every country that has genocide, and even though they didn't speak the same language, they would all love each other and get along. And we need to learn that again. So I think we need to start with educating children about what is happening so that when they're still young, we can educate them to understand that not to choose hate, to choose love. For us, it was a, a need to tell the story in order for healing to begin. And it's not to, to, to put point fingers and people say, it's your fault. But I think when you're not doing anything, in a way we're all guilty for not doing anything. And I think we've been hearing over and over again tonight at this conference is that good people who don't do anything are just as guilty, you know. We were, we're all responsible for not just looking at our own problems and our own hurts, but feeling for other people. And I think the important thing was that I ha I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, and a great-grandmother now, and I want my children to, have a f to feel good about themselves. You know, one of the things that, um, one of my, my son came home from school one day, and he was very sad. I said, what's wrong, Sam? He said, well, I was in school today, and everyone knows I'm an Indian, and my teacher had a, what part of the lesson was, she said that the Indians were murderers and they were, they were thieves. And after the story was over, I felt like everyone was looking at me. See, our kids should be able to go to school too, like anybody, any other child, and come away feeling good about themselves. They should be able to hear about their heroes. You know, our heroes are this country's enemies. Our children need to hear about our heroes too. And that's another reason for me as a mother is being able to do this museum. It's a museum of healing for our people. It's a museum for, I'd like to get to the point where it's not about just Indians or, I mean every child should be able to feel good about themselves, no matter whatever race, whatever religion, should feel good about themselves. And I always tell my children, you have pride, but make sure you keep the prejudice out of it. And uh, I mean, that's, for me, part of the reason we're doing the museum. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be able to have a voice for those that don't have a voice. Uh, here in Texas, we have so many of our tribes that were annihilated and uh, are not here to speak. We can't change history, but we can go forward. And what we do with the future is what's, what is important. And uh, that's what we have. We have the future. We have the present and we can all make a difference. And I thank the Mimosine Foundation, Marianne and Joshua, Coke Buchanan, Hargis, um, Constant Hargis, uh, met a wonderful man who helped put this exhibit together, uh, Philip Collins, uh, just, just wonderful people here with the Mimosine, of course, at Unity Church, and just wonderful people with wonderful hearts. And I like to see the good in people, and, I, and this is just a wonderful thing to see people that are, who have that heart and that desire to do what's right.